Hey everybody, how y'all, how you folks doing? This is Odie six 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 six, and doing some reviews here. I got a few independent features I want to talk about. Really good stuff here. Really enjoyed, pretty much. Yeah, I enjoyed all of them. Like them, like them all. <clears throat> First one here is by uh, Michael Mahoney. Uh, you may know, like, remember Deadly Detour and Sloppy the Psychotic. And he's doing a new one uh, coming out. It's called like A Dark Place Inside. That looks really cool. And with this guy, I mean, his movies just get better and better and better. I mean, Deadly Detour was like super cheesy, you know, like rough acting. Then I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. It was fun. And then next movie, you know, it got a little bit better. The acting got better. And then this one, <clears throat> you can really tell they're getting better at what they're doing. But anyway, what this movie's about, you got James Costa as the uh, main dude. His name's Larry in the movie. Uh... He's got IBS, which is Irritable Bowel Syndrome, and he's got a shit all the time. Uh, it, it makes him out to be, he's just this nerdy guy, he works in an office, like, cleaning up trash and shit, and, you know, cleaning bathrooms, so he's like the custodian, and, uh, so anytime he gets, like, worked up, he, he likes this chick at work, too, and, like, this one dude is always trying to cock block him, so, uh, yeah, anytime he gets, like, pissed off or worked up or anxious or whatever, he has to get shit, like, immediately. And this is, you know, shows like flashbacks when he was a kid. It shows his mom, like, come on, we gotta go to school. I gotta take you to school. And then, it, you know, she drops him off and he's all like, got shit down his pants. Things like that. He's always had this problem shitting. So it's a lot of shit jokes, a lot of poopy humor, which I, I thought was awesome. Uh, anyway, story goes on. He's got, you know, that dickhead that's, that's cock blocking him. Uh, his buddy tells him he lives with this, like, this dude thinks he's real cool, you know, ladies man, he's always screwing chicks, that's like his roommate. So his roommate tells him, man, you need to do something about that guy that's hitting on your woman, you know, you need to stand up for yourself and blah blah blah. So, uh, you know, one day they were like on a tra uh, trailer, you know, trying to like, you know, like, uh, taking shit off a trailer. You know, diesel trailer, things like that. Anyway, he gets pissed off, they start, you know, the dude starts touching him, he's like, don't touch me. He ends up pushing the dude off the trailer. Dude gets impaled, and suddenly he don't want shit anymore. So he kind of finds something that helps him uh, get through the IBS, and from there on, it's just it's goofy. It's really good. It's you know it's campy. It's supposed to be not a serious movie. Uh, pretty. I had a good time with it. I really recommend it. The gore in it was fun. I mean, it's you know nothing real fancy, but it was it was cool. And uh, the best part was the uh, the damn montage where he's running around killing different shit like this. The fucking, there's a little dog he picks up and he's like got a gun to its head. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's not real, you know. I wouldn't laugh at it if it wasn't real, but that shit was funny. Anyway, yeah, PETA, Animal Rights, what's up? Then I got Matt Jason, Re Revolution 666. And, uh, man, I'm looking for a little, you know, we, we talked, he, he talked it over with me and he was like, you know, man, please use part of your name for my new movie, you know, I'll give you, you know. So if you want to talk about, like, sharing profits or whatever, just come to me. I don't mind, you know, I'm a pretty nice guy. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, Matt J. Souls, Revolution 666, you may remember Matt. I know I'm showing you a golden disc here, that's all, that's what I got. I'm, I'm sorry I don't have the cover art and shit, but you can look it up, you can type it, you know what I mean? Google that shit. Um, so anyway, Matt J. Souls, it was nice enough to send me this. Uh, this is a new movie he's got coming out soon. Uh, you know, he did, th he did, uh, Necrophiles, which is a classic. Movie. I love that movie. I'm such a big fan of that movie. And then uh, Dead City with uh, Ron Ashton. You know he's in it. Uh, he's in a... Anyway, I ain't talking about that right now. Um, so Revolution Six Six Six. What this is basically about is uh, it starts off. It shows a suicide. Okay. From there on, you kind of like he goes forward. It goes to this dude, Freddie Curtains, which is, he's like this cool radio DJ, you know? He's like an older, he's, he's probably like maybe late 30s, early 40s, uh, tall, lanky guy, you know? He, cool DJ guy, he's got a cramp shirt on and shit, which I thought was pretty cool. But, uh, anyway, he gets this CD in the mail, or, no, not in the, well, yeah, in the mail, this dude brings it to him. But anyway, he gets a CD, he puts it in there, he plays it on a station, it's one of those, like, you know, where it's, but anyway, the music sounds like, uh, it's like piano with drums and then like, uh, you know, guitar distortion. It reminded me of that, that Sonic Youth, uh, cover of the Carpenter song. But yeah, anyway, yeah. 
off track as always, I'm sorry, ADD. But yeah, so anyway, he plays it, uh, goes to a scene with this girl and a dude, and he's taking pictures of her, like a little photo shoot, you know? And they're listening to that station where it's playing that weird-ass song. And the zombie comes up, they're in, oh, I forgot to say, they're in the graveyard doing the photo shoot. So a zombie comes up by the ground, and that is the walrus. Some, something, you'll, you'll learn later in the movie, like, what's going on with this music, the sound, it wakes him up, the walrus. Uh, so yeah, he's just a zombie, gets up, and he kills the chick, the dude gets away, and he knows Henry, not uh, Henry Curtin, Freddy Curtin's at the, uh, the radio station. He's like, you gotta tell everybody, you know, look out, and dub, 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 this is what happened. And, uh, Freddy's not, you know, not really believing it, you know, he's like, whatever. And then, uh, there's like this Manson-type group that, I guess, worshipped the walrus when he was a, you know, when he was, I don't know, worshipped the legend of the walrus. And, uh... They want the CD. They want the CD back. They're trying to, I don't know, they're trying to get it back. And uh, you got the walrus going around killing people, which the kills are really campy. You know, I mean, this is a low budget movie. I mean, you know, Matt Jaisal produced, directed it, edited it, like, did a lot, did almost everything in that, you know, department. And it shot on digital. Um, but back to the story. So anyway, you got the walrus running around, and you got Freddy Curtains. He's, he's getting harassed by the, by the bastards, too. Um, you know, they kind of, they, they meet up, have a little confrontation, which I thought that was the part of the movie where it started really getting going for me, is when Freddy Cur Curtains is out on the street with his knife, and he's all tough guy, and he's on his motorcycle and shit. I don't know, man, his, his character was just funny to me, he was just cool, I mean, I liked it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can't really go too much into it without giving the whole thing away, but yeah, I definitely would recommend this. Go to uh, VidEvil. Uh, he's got a DVD store, VidEvil. I'll leave all the uh, links below for everybody's stuff. Um, then I got The Legend of the Hillbilly Butcher by uh, Joaquin Matavon. Uh, this movie was really, really good, man. I, I've, I've told people about this movie. This is a... Alright, basically what you got here, it's a 70's, you know, homage movie, you know what I mean, the grind, grindhouse style, but this is, this is the real thing, you know what I mean, this isn't, you can tell he's watched and done his home, you know what I mean, he's watched the movies, because you can tell when somebody tries to do one of these throwbacks, and it just comes out lame, it just looks like they put a filter on it and that was it, you know, oh it's a throwback, but uh, with this one, you can tell it by camera angles, the people he got to in the film, which there was only like two people that didn't really fit for me in the film, but they, they're gone pretty quick. I mean, it wasn't like they were terrible or nothing. I'm just saying it just didn't fit for the, the feel of the film. I don't know why. But, uh, you know, the lead actor here, his character's name is Carl Jessup. He's the, he's the hillbilly butcher. The movie starts out with this old man telling these kids a story. He's like, uh, you know, my Grandma told me to come tell you guys a story. Do uh, you want to hear a story about the bouncing bunny? She gave him this shitty book with a bunny on it. It's like, you want to hear a story about the bouncing bunny, or do you want to hear the legend of the hillbilly butcher? And they're like, hillbilly butcher. And so anyway, he, you know, he starts going on about, you know, Carl Jessup. So the movie starts. <clears throat> this does have the uh, grain filter. It, it looks like it's shot. It's shot on digital, but it has the grain filter, which I know annoys some people. Well, like I said, with the with the angles and everything, it kind of made it made it work for me. I I liked it. I enjoyed it. And plus, the whole movie almost like it was like the, had a uh, the background was like cicadas and crickets and shit. So it, I don't know. It's just like when you watch it, you feel I don't know. You feel horny. <laughs> but anyway, going on. It's his farm. You know, you don't fuck around. You don't come on his farm. You don't have sex and jizz all over his crops. You got to. You know, you gotta stay off the Hillbilly Butcher's property. He'll bust your ass. Because what happens is he's hanging out there. He lives there with his half-sister, Renee. Uh, she makes him food and shit. Kind of takes care of him. He goes out and does his thing. He makes moonshine. So uh, he has this buddy that buys it off of him. And also, he's a, you know, complete scavenger. He's always going over there to take a sip of his moonshine. But his name is Billy Wayne. He wants to do it with uh, Renee, his half-sister. He's real horny. He's, he's always talking. He's like... Man, you know what I think about all the time? Pussy! Pussy! No, he don't say it like that, but he does say pussy. So, you know, get the kids out of the room because he says pussy. He does. He says pussy. Anyway, so yeah, um, 
you know, basically it's him, him and that dude hanging out. Uh, people get on his property. He, you know, he messes them up. There's one cool scene where he's got this chick in a bathtub. He's like dismembering her and stuff. Just the way, and then it kind of shows his backstory also. His, his, he got left that house by his mother and father. And uh, they were in some sick shit too. They would kill people and all that. And so when they died, um, uh, Carl Jessup, like his father was like, here, you got to take the knife, son. Now you're going to be, you know, the chosen one or whatever. And so some reason it's like, you know, it's like a ritualistic, like they all have done it. And uh, there's one part that was really weird where he goes to this barn. Well, pretty much the whole place is a barn, but he goes to this little shed and... Uh, <clears throat> All the, the locations are great too. They're really, it has got a really cool atmosphere, and it feels like it could be an older movie just because they don't use any new. There's nothing new in there, you know what I mean? No cell phone. They don't show any really. Not that I can remember. There's nothing really modern in there. It's all the woods and that shed. But yeah, there's part where uh, he's trying to bring his parents back to life, so he tries to sell his soul and shit. And then there's parts in the movie where it's like there's these, he's there's these weird images of devils and stuff behind, like demons and shit like he'll look in a window and see like an image of a demon which I wish it went more a little bit more into that which that's it doesn't matter the way this turned out was excellent I cannot wait for him to you know put this out I'll be buying it and that you know all these films are just great really good stuff I really enjoyed all of them 